welcome back to my survival world Minecraft. Um, I'm here on the island where, you know, basically is the uh, entrance point to my strip mining uh, entrance, as you can see right here. Uh, it's super deep, it's big, it's wide, because I expect to put some kind of mechanism or option to come in and out of there super fast without me actually having to climb up and down the ridiculous ladder. But that's not what we're focusing on today. Today, I'm kind of thinking, well... You know, I definitely want to build some kind of location or hub here to, you know, actually take a rest and relax in. Plus also my horse here, he looks bored out of his mind just standing around in this little fence. I want to get him a nice proper home. So, you know, we're looking at this entire area and like I said in a previous video, I'm thinking about making a lighthouse here. Sort of like a beacon of where I need to uh, come and rest and find the, you know, the way to get home. And, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting location. It's actually near my spawn area, which is right over there. So that's neat. Uh, so let's see here. So I have an idea. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of freehand this a little bit. You know, uh, it's been a while since I really built something nice. So it's going to be open to, you know, suggestions and little ideas that I have here and there. And, of course, I got a box over here, a chest, I mean, to... <laughs> get some of my materials going. Uh, just some basic stuff, mostly wood, mostly stone. As at the moment, I don't really have any fancy material other than the granite, andesite, and diorite that's uh, in the mines, of course. I probably will need to make some furnaces and start smelting some cobblestone to make stone and stone bricks and so on and so forth. So I think that's what I'll have to do. Like I said, I'm gonna have to freehand all of this and kind of just feel for it. I think one of the other things I need to do is I want to kind of use some clay, and I do have a tiny swamp biome that's on the other side of the uh, ridge over here, so what I'll do is I'll get in the boat, uh, I'll have to make a shovel of course, and I will catch you guys over there. Alright, so we made it here over to the tiny swamp biome that's over here right around the ridge from the lighthouse, which is just probably roughly about 100 to 200 blocks away. Uh, this is a little interesting area, I thought about maybe I can work on some kind of slime farm in the future it won't be as efficient as i would need it to because like i said as you can see the birchwood forest wraps just around here and it ends right there where a plains biome begins and so the ocean is a little way out there or uh but unfortunately you know i couldn't find another swamp area nearby i'm just aware of this one so i'll come over here grab some clay see how it looks and just run from there but the idea is, is that I want to make the tower bit the, the main part uh, the focus and so I want to use a unique material I want to use obviously stained clay to make sort of a white tower uh, or I might mix up some colors put some other interesting uh, clay stained clay colors maybe just regular cooked clay and bricks I think I want to use bricks because you can kind of make an interesting thing with this clay like besides the terracotta and some other focuses that it has is that if you use uh, things like white stained clay you can make it just a regular clay brick block and what will happen though is if you dot it around the building it makes it look like you know there's some kind of plaster material that's over the tower and what you do is that by adding the brick in certain parts to break it up it makes it look like that the plaster has worn off so it's really interesting it's a idea that i used in the hardcore survival world when i was creating the cobblestone generator which the cobblestone generator was an interesting addition to that uh, playthrough the only thing is, is that well I don't think I really want to focus on making a cobblestone generator. It took a lot of time and resources to make it. Even though it was fun to have, I find myself that just going out and mining really satisfies my cobblestone feel for it. Like I said, we're just going to run through here real quick and get as much clay as I can. Alright folks, so I got all this going right here. I made eight furnaces and I put a stack of clay in each and every one of them. It's going to probably take, uh, let's see if I can remember correctly, somewhere about five to ten minutes to get all that cooked. I still have about, yeah, two stacks and a little bit right here left. I got a bunch of cobblestone from the mines, plenty of wood, and I think one of the first things I'm going to try to do is, well, I'm going to section off this area right here. I'm going to build sort of a uh, barrier 
of uh, like a retaining wall around the island, almost to make it look like um, back before where I used to live is in Lauderdale, or Dalewood, sorry. Um, the town is Dalewood and Lauderdale is the county. But uh, what we used to have, it was more of like a boating community. And right around the neighborhoods and everywhere else where you would have buildings, you'd had a wooden retaining wall to keep the dirt from washing off into the lake. So I think that's what I kind of want to do with this. Just build a retaining wall completely around this fix up the island a little bit. I'm not hoping to terraform a whole lot, although I will fix up some of the more disgust, disgusting areas that I ended up doing, like this uh, little bit of dirt that I needed, uh, you know, and patching up that hole and whatnot. But, uh, you know, I'm going to keep much of the hill intact and take down the tree, obviously, because it's, it's one of those big, big trees that I really don't like. Um, I mean, sometimes it's okay, but I don't, if it's going to be my island, I'm going to build everything. I'm going to have my hands on something. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to run back to the fortress and build up some bone mill. Uh, that way I can stain my clay white. Alright folks, so I got everything that I need to, well, not everything, but you know, basically get everything started to start building the uh, retaining walls. Brought the bones to make the bone meal to make white stained clay. Now I'm going to do a quick little cinematic uh, before and after image. And that way at the end of the video I can probably show you an after of how everything turned out. Alright, so as you can see here, we have the island just as plain as it can be. We, of course, we have my horse there, a workbench, and the ugly tree. So, like I said, we're going to start off building a retaining wall, and then we'll start doing some landscaping here and there. Fix up uh, the little bit of spotted sand that we have, and the uh, dirt that we're missing. And, of course, patch up that hole. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get started on that, and see what it looks like. Alright, so here we are on the edge of the island where we're going to start. I believe what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use two different kinds of wood. I'm going to use the dark oak planks and the oak wood planks, and of course the dark oak wood logs. So, uh, oh not dark oak wood, I mean to use spruce. Well, anyway, we'll just see how this turns out. So, what I plan on doing is that I am going to go along the wall just like this. And as you can see, I'm going to put dark oak planks on the bottom. And then on top of it, we'll do the regular uh, oak planks. The reason being is that I kind of want to give it this, uh, like the wood is soaked wet. So the dark oak planks makes it look like that it's more waterlogged, or that it has absorbed enough moisture to give the appearance. So that's a good way to kind of balance out things a little bit, uh, give everything some context and texture to it, or as you will. So we'll do this, and then we do these. Uh, right here, I'm going to put some dirt. That way it gives it the retaining wall look. That way, you know, it, it makes it look like that the uh, dirt is not being washed away. So, cool. Now, we're gonna probably take a step back and see how this looks. Okay, it's not too bad, uh, but unfortunately it makes the dark oak look like it's just dirt. Uh, dirt that's just sitting underneath the wood planks. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of it because I'm already committed to it and just see how it turns out. All right, everyone, welcome back to the next update here. Uh, taking a look at the island, you know, taking a step back and see how everything's looking like. Uh, now, you may have noticed that uh, there's a lot going on now, or a lot more than what you saw in the sped up video. Well, that's because I got tired of recording my little speed run videos and I decided, well, I'm just going to do little quirky updates here and there and then use small builds and then finally just put it on video. So, uh, as you can see here, I finished up the uh, barrier, the retaining wall, alongside the island. There's a lot of noise to it, in my opinion, but I'm, I'm kind of comfortable with that. I'll go ahead and jump down here and let you take a look at an example of what the wall looks around the entire island. So, you can see right here, I used the two different kinds of wood that I mentioned earlier. Here's the uh, dark oak to make it look like that the wood is waterlogged, and then above it is the regular oak. Well, every so many blocks, I have these logs right here as the supports, sort of like the pillars that drive down in front of the wall to hold it back. On top of those, I decorated them with the cobblestone fence and to put a torch on top of it to add lighting around the wall. On the wood here, I added stone buttons to go ahead and act as if it were nails, heads of nails. Hanging over the wall, just to add depth to it, is the oak half slabs. I added those to, like I said, add depth to the entire wall. But I didn't want to just leave it as just one solid um, 
two-dimensional object. So I wanted to give it depth. And as you can see here, I dug out a little bit of the island. I know I said I was going to try to keep as much natural formation as I wanted to, but I really wanted to put a path in. So I went ahead and peeled back some of the island's uh, natural hill formation, put up this uh, stone brick, and I decided to make this island. I made it a little bit wild and you know, could just add air choices to it because I didn't just want a straight path. Later, I'll come back and add some bushes, trees, and some natural tall grass. On uh, certain parts of the island, I've added these piers right here, these half slab piers, uh, with uh, wooden stone buttons inside of them. And of course, I added the sort of the support for the piers on the side as the logs. You can see here's my regular boat. I'm going to replace those with uh, acacia boats. You know, I think the birch row is okay looking, but I want to add more color to the island. Another thing I want to add about how I constructed the uh, the retaining wall is that if you look under here, I didn't just stop at just one level. I actually went further and further down. We can move over here and we can see a better example, but you can see that the pillars drive a little bit further down the more they overhang over the island. You can see it underwater, the slope actually gets steeper and steeper. And then you can see here, like as the wall went down, so did the retaining wall its features start to slip further and further down. The reason why I did that is that I don't like to have something that's incomplete. I don't like to stop at a certain depth just because you can't see it. It's more like, in my mindset, is that it's there. And as you can see, this is the deepest one right here, the retaining wall. Is that in my mind, I think, oh, well, the retaining wall doesn't go all the way down, doesn't feel right. And on top of that, the way I do my builds in-game for example, here I'll just set up a little bit of a land mass. So when I build something, I don't like to just build structures on top of land. I like to, as you can see right here, because it's sitting on the hill. If it's on a hill like this, I like to build structure into the land, not on top of it, into it. So a better example of this is to, if, it, if it's sitting right here, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to look like that. So if it was more on the edge, that's what it would look like. There would actually be dirt in front of it. So that would look like it was built into it. But, uh, you know, I didn't really have that many issues. Uh, it slowed down a little bit over there with the retaining wall, but it wasn't too bad. And probably one of the more noticeable features, as you saw when I was panning around, is the lighthouse. Yes, I got a lot of bit of the lighthouse done. Uh, I added a little bit of characteristics. As you can see, I used the white terracotta to primary color of the lighthouse. I added the brick blocks right here to make it look like it's kind of like a white plaster and it's peeling off the feeling that there's like a brick structure underneath it. At the bottom here as a base, it's sort of like a solid base, I used the, yeah, I believe it's andesite, polished andesite. And to break up the textures a little bit more, this right here is actually a little bit more of an expensive block, but this is the furnace that's just turned around where you couldn't see the front of them. And you can interact but I did that because I thought it was an interesting texture. I want to incorporate a texture inside of some builds. Above that is the stone brick. And on the sides is spruce fence posts. They go all the way up there. On top of the white terracotta for every layer of the white house I have is the regular slabs, stone slabs. And also I like the texture on top of the furnace and I might incorporate that into some floors later. But for the inside of the floor, is a lower level. I have what is regular diorite, polished diorite, did a checkerboard pattern. It looks pretty neat, it looks kind of nice, it's easy on the eyes. What I was thinking earlier is that the lighthouse, I wanted to make it slim, but I ended up, when I was looking at my circle diagram, I was like, oh, I want to go a little bit thicker, uh, and then kind of like close in as the, the higher up I get, you know, to make it look like not just a straight cylinder, but kind of like a natural lighthouse. So I ended up making it a little bit thicker, and then on the inside, I didn't want you to see the terracotta, so I added wood walls. And that's kind of cool. But the thing is, though, is that I made the lighthouse a little bit fat, and it, it just looks really, really fat on the outside, and it feels fat on the inside. And so I'm a little, I'm a little bit like, oh, well, that's okay, but you know, I can live with it, kind of situation. I think later, though, if I ever decide to build another building, I'll just know to. In my mind, I really want to keep certain builds, you know, small and cozy, whereas this one 
big open vat. And then sometimes when you make it fat on the inside, it's hard to give it a coating or do the right decoration. And as you can see, we're up here. Uh, this is the roof. And then this is where the big light bulb is going to go uh, to make that. I'm going to just take redstone lamp. goes down with the lighthouse turns on by itself. Okay, we're going to climb back down and take another just big open look of it. But uh, this is what I got so far on the island and it's coming together really nice. This update probably took me about around, or maybe just the entire first episode of this, took me about four to five hours to get this point, which in my opinion I got a lot done. It may not look like it, but I, I feel like uh, I got a whole lot of, I got a whole lot of crap done. It was nice. So yeah, there's the lighthouse, and there's the texturing of on it, and the painting wall. So I think this is a pretty neat uh, way to kind of stop off. When I get back, I'm going to actually build the tiny houses and the horse stable right around here to accommodate the lighthouse. The lighthouse is not going to be the only structure that houses this. And of course, I'm going to build a walkway that leads up to the doorway, and I'm going to fix up the door. The doorway is not going to be so big of a square like this. But uh, yeah, I think this is pretty interesting. I did discover though, after putting in the lighthouse and committing to the science, that I was like, oh man, this is awfully close to this area. It may not go so well, so I might have to build this like sort of entrance elevator on a like sub level. I'll probably build a little doorway on the side of this hill. It goes in and there's a door and a room where you can actually take an elevator and it takes you down to the bridge. And like I said, I'll move here. I'm going to build a nice horse stable for him so he's not over here. And, and Exposed to the elements, tiny house, a, a nice cozy house that looks out to the sea. Kind of, but like I said, it's looking nice, and I'm really proud of, of how much I got done. You know, a lot of it was just freehanded. I didn't really plan anything out. It's nice and interesting. Next time when we do episode two, we'll do the giant light bulb on top of the house, the lighthouse here. So at night we can see what it looks like when it turns. Right now it's pretty interesting. I did a little pointed roof as you can see up there. I did some cobblestone fencing and a spruce uh, post uh, fencing that I did. It looks it looks really well. It looks nice. I haven't really had any issues with monsters, so that's good. But it's mostly because I think I'm still within range of where monsters can't really spawn, and there's some lighting on the island, so that's good. Yeah, I like it. It just takes a lot of work because I had to end up smelting a lot of things, like fixing some stone, uh, making new... I had to grow trees to build certain fence posts and everything like that. I still ended up short on materials, so that was basically it. Except for the white terracotta. I had plenty of white terracotta. That was good. And it, you know, now that I look at it, even though it's a fat, fat lighthouse, it came out kind of nice, and it's very comforting to look at. Especially the retaining wall. From a distance, it, it, the retaining wall looks really noisy because it's got all that texturing and junk on it but it in my opinion it really looks good from a distance it just kind of looks it has a very comforting feel and so when i get back and i make those buildings i'll start building more natural looks like the grass and the flowers and whatnot just oh there's a skeleton over there but yeah you know i appreciate you guys checking this out uh, it's a lot of fun to making it uh, so if you are interested, <laughs> I'm trying to find my butt. If you are interested in watching more of it, just stick around, check for updates every once in a while. Uh, and if you like uh, the lighthouse, if you have any suggestions, please leave a comment or what kind of build size I should really go for because mine's a little bit open minded as to what I'm building. It has no real bad. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys will check this out next time and I'll catch y'all later. See you later.